To get the most out of your prompts for mid-journey photography, the first thing we can do is change the camera type. Think about the specific situation that the photo is being taken in. Like from the dash cam of a car driving down the street on a foggy day. You might run into some paranormal activity when driving around in America. What if the photo has been taken from the body cam of a rescue worker saving a dog from a flood? Or shot from a camera on a soldier inside a war zone? You can mimic security camera footage, although this doesn't work as consistently. Try placing the cameras in a convenience store. Here, we captured a photo of a polar bear stealing some snacks. GoPros are popular for outdoor activities. They're known for these extreme fisheye lens effects that bend the image. You might be a skydiver about to jump from an airplane, or just flying around in a hot air balloon at sunset. The 360 cameras give you a complete panoramic view of the environment. These look really cool, although if you inspect the image closely, you'll notice that the left edge and right edge don't really connect together seamlessly like you'd expect from a real 360 camera. But they do make for cool visuals though. If you're looking for clean crisp images with nice saturated colors, try a DSLR digital camera in your prompts. These produce really sharp images. I like the way they look for natural photography or landscapes like these rice terraces. Although they'll work for pretty much any photo you can think of and consistently produce high quality images. Similarly, the iPhone is also known for its digital camera. These are great for a variety of different actions and environments. If you want a retro old school vibe though, there's a lot of options available. Starting with a disposable camera which gives an appearance of lower quality with less sharpness and more muted colors, but the authentic visual style with its imperfections and grainy image make them more memorable somehow. We can try using the Fujifilm Insta-X, which is an instant camera. I do think Midjourney could use some improvement when generating multiple faces in an image. To get a similar effect, the Polaroid camera can be used to capture nostalgic images that look like they're from the 70s or 80s. These look unedited and unfiltered, which is great for more relatable photos. Go inside a photo booth to capture some goofy images with groups of friends. In general, you'll want to use analog cameras when going for the retro vibe, like the landscape photo on the left. Analog cameras use actual film stock to print photos, and Midjourney will generate images with faded and muted colors. Use digital cameras, which is shown in the image on the right for sharper, cleaner, more modern looking images with more saturated colors. If you want something really unique and eye catching, try using an infrared camera. These use special filters in film to capture a light spectrum that normally isn't visible to the human eye. These photos have a surreal style with high contrast and almost look like they came out of a dream. I found that images of trees are really common in infrared photos. Some specific camera brands include the Canon EOS, the Sony A7 cameras, or Hasselblad X1D. I found that prompting for specific camera brands does generate images that look more like photos, although the consistency isn't there for images generated using the same camera brand. To really get control over the visual style of our photos, we'll need to prompt for different film stocks. Daguerreotype is one of the earliest photographic processes and uses copper plates to print images. These were extremely detailed for their time and have a metallic looking quality to them. They're not used anymore but are great for creating old school photos. Tintype photos are made with a similar process, although they use iron plates instead of copper. The metallic sheen you get on these images is truly unique. Washi film is a film stock made with traditional Japanese paper. These produce grainy and soft vintage style images. Cyanotype produces a cyan blue photo print. It's one of the oldest photographic processes, originally used for engineering drawings. The color comes from chemical reactions during the photo making process. Black and white photos are a really popular artistic choice when it comes to photography. Try the Kodak Tri-X film stock for nostalgic vibes, like this portrait of a young man here. If you want sharper quality, use Ilford XP2 film. 
They're known for their fine grain details and high contrast between light and dark shades. It's a great choice for images with strong shapes and shadows like this woman on her couch. Retro photos have a style reminiscent of older decades with more muted and desaturated colors on grainy film. Agfa Vista film is perfect for these types of images. It used to be one of the most popular film types for amateur photographers, although they're no longer in production, but are still used for their distinct colors and retro style. Another good option is Lamography Color Negative 800 film. They have more emphasis on grain and contrast, creating a gritty aesthetic. For ultra cinematic images, use Singsteel 800T. Great for a variety of different colors and lighting conditions. Singsteel film is known for the soft glowing effect you get around light sources in images like this demon in a temple with the light glowing in the background. Use expired film for an extra faded look. Or red scale film for its distinctive red, orange, and golden color hues that can be used for warmer and cozy images or more intense and dramatic scenes. If you want to take photos of people, I'd recommend using Kodak Portrait Film. This is a professional grade color film designed for portrait and commercial photography. Kodak Portrait 160 film produces natural colors with very fine grain details. I found that it works really good for images with multiple different characters. Kodak Gold Film is designed to bring out warm skin tones. It's not as fine grain as Kodak Portra, but it can be used to generate really nice photos with glowing light during sunrise, golden hour, or sunset. Here's a couple of different options if you want really vibrant colors. Kodak Ektachrome Film produces vivid, saturated colors with a high level of detail. The Fuji Velvia film stock is also known for vibrant colors and is well suited for landscapes and natural photography. Here, I generated a picture of a colorful natural landscape on an alien planet with glowing plant life. Sticking with Fuji film stock, the Velvia film series also produces bold and rich colors and is great for portraits. The red sweater jumps out at you in this headshot of a woman. If you want to try experimental colors, prompt for an Adox color implosion, designed to produce unpredictable color shifts towards warmer and cooler color tones with extra grainy photos. Adox color implosion has its own distinct style and is worth trying out if you want something unconventional. If that's too much detail to remember, you can always just add shot with 35mm film, which generates images that mimic photographs instead of the default mid-journey style. So far, we've covered the fundamentals of camera types and film stock, but to take our images to the next level and really customize them with our own style, we'll need to layer on some extra photography effects, starting with the physical lens of the camera. If you use a prompt keywords, cracked lens, or scratched a lens, you can produce these photos with damaged glass overlaid on top of them. It makes you feel like something's broken in the scene. We can use blurry lens to blur out the background of the image. The fox is clear and sharp, but the forest around him is blurred out. This draws attention and focus to the subject of the photo. Try tilt shift lens to create photos with a miniature world in them. This miniature effect comes from the shifted perspective of the image. All the people and buildings and environment will appear tour-like and tiny. Fisheye lens resembles the GoPro camera we've already talked about. They use an ultra-wide angle lens to create distorted effects that bend reality. If you want extreme levels of details on zoomed-in images, use macro lens, which are designed to focus extremely close up to a subject, such as this portrait of a grasshopper. To adding lighting effects and sparkles, we'll use optical effects. Notice the soft circles of light cluster together in the background. This comes from the bokeh effect, which blurs out the background and highlights points of light with these circular shapes. Light leaks happen when there's accidental exposure of light on the film, which causes streaks of light in the final image. They're usually seen from photos taken with older equipment, but they're so popular that today they're used as a creative way to add nostalgic vibes to your image. Lens flare occurs when light is reflected by lens in unexpected ways, creating these bursts of light 
and adds a hazy cinematic look. Use the keyword starburst to get a similar effect. Prompt with the words iridescent light, which adds rainbow rays lighting up your image as if the light was shining through a prism. Chromatic aberrations also alter the colors. This happens when the camera lens fails to focus all colors of light properly. It's usually an unwanted optical effect, but if used properly, it can create some lively colors. If you combine two different images into the same frame, it creates a collage photo where elements from both photographs appear in the same picture. This is called double exposure. Combining multiple images adds additional meaning to your photos, like this pregnant lady superimposed on a photo of nature. Capture an image over a long period of time and create the long exposure effect. This is used to generate blurred motion and trails of light in the final photo and works really well for stars in the sky or city lights at night. But to add a sense of dynamic movement and motion to your images, use motion effects. Some prompt keywords to try include motion blur. Zoom blur makes it feel like you're moving forwards or backwards very quickly or try panning blur, where the woman is racing to catch a bus and we get these blurred horizontal action lines. I spent a bit of time experimenting with reflective surfaces in my photos and created these giant reflective water droplets. Use different surfaces like a puddle of water in a city or a metallic instrument like the tuba. To get the absolute most out of the cameras, film stocks, and effects I talked about today, we have to combine them together in a complementary way. Combine Polaroid cameras with light leaks for an extra vintage effect. It's almost too bright to look at. For some contrasting vibes, I'll go with warm color tones shot on Kodak Gold film, but adding cracked camera lens at the beginning of my prompts. Finally, let's use a retro black and white Kodak Tri-X film, capturing a photo of a woman in a dance hall, but we'll also throw in bouquet light effects from chandeliers in the background. If you'd like to see more advanced tips on AI photography, go and watch my video tutorial on prompting for different camera angles. Also, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more from me.